There's a huge amount of scaremongering that's going on from parts of the establishment who are looking for any excuse to stop this or to delay it. Yeah, the instruction of the people wasn't leave subject to a deal, it was leave. Leave. It's not, it wasn't even Brexit, it's actually worse than remaining in the European Union. I want a clean, proper Brexit, All right, let's be very clean. clear. What we need is leadership that is prepared to either negotiate a good deal or walk away. No deal, no problem, no money, we save 39 billion, we spend it back in the UK. Garbage in equals garbage out with these economic models. There's a wonderful opportunity as long as we leave the customs union because that's crucial. Yeah, free. We can then have a free port yeah, yeah. Sorry, and free ports generate thousands and thousands of manufacturing jobs. If we have no deal, we're not going to pay 39 billion unless our negotiators are incredibly weak and that actually really concentrates the minds of the European Union because if they haven't got 39 billion of our money, they are bust. Oh, come on. Let's be clear. We all know in business that no deal is better than a bad deal. Of course it's true. Every business person knows that and this is the worst deal ever in history to pay 39 billion pounds for nothing guaranteed in return please welcome to the stage richard tice Thank you very much. I must come again. <laughs> the best so far. Welcome, Brexiteers. It's, it's fantastic to be here in Lincoln. Such a special place. And people who believe in Brexit and who believe, of course, in democracy. I can see we're going to have a good night. Things are looking up. Um, uh, my name is Richard Tice and uh, I'm an entrepreneur. I've been involved in setting up businesses small, medium and large. I've been involved in building thousands of homes, creating tens of thousands of jobs, bringing hundreds of millions of pounds of investment into the UK economy. And yes, that was the day job. I got a bit involved in politics and I made a mistake. <laughs> I'm sorry, none of us are perfect. I was a member of the Conservative Party. Uh, that's about the worst boo I've had, actually. <laughs> um, but that changed a few weeks ago when I accepted an invitation to be the chairman of the Brexit Party, the new Brexit Party. And it's incredible to think that it was only four weeks ago today that we launched in a factory in Coventry. Just four weeks. Some might say it feels like a lifetime, but anyway, we've been quite busy. And uh, hopefully you can see uh, on the video screen, we've got a video of just what we've been up to since that launch. Uh, so let's hope that the, work, the technology works and let's see what we've been up to. Trade. That is why I set up the Brexit party. It's why we're going to fight the European elections on May the 23rd. And that is just the beginning of what is needed in this country. Democracy is under threat. And when politicians fail to deliver, there must be consequences. I was too young to vote in 2016, but now I support the Brexit party because I believe in delivering on democracy. It's time to recognise that actually we are an incredible nation. This isn't about left or right. It's about standing up for our right to be heard. Successful, hard-working, so much to be confident, enthusiastic and optimistic about. That's why I'm supporting the Brexit party. We are a single nation. We wish to remain a nation. They must adhere to the promises made to the people. Let's be optimistic. And for the benefit of our children and grandchildren, if you want a home and you're a Brexiteer, you join the Brexit party now. We can do so much better. 
than currently we're getting from our members of parliament. We want to be an independent, self-governing nation, making its own laws, controlling its own borders, and being proud of who we are as a people. Join us, help us, support us, do what you can for us. We need change in this country and we need it now. Britain needs the Brexit Party and the Brexit Party needs you. That is, that is absolutely true. We do need you, all your support. Hands up those who are registered supporters as we speak. Excellent. There's a few of you who are still thinking about it. Hopefully by the end of this evening, you'll go home and you'll sign up. It's 25 quid. In these four weeks, some 90,000 people have signed up. We are the fastest growing political movement in this country because this country wants change. Of that, there is no doubt. Now, I don't want you getting too cosy in your seats. We need a bit of audience participation. So, ladies and gentlemen, what do we want? Brexit! Brexit. When do we want it? Now. now! Let's have your placards up. What do we want? Brexit! Brexit. When do we want it? Now. now! Excellent. Just warming up. I know it's Friday night. Um, the truth is that under the current Westminster class, we've been humiliated. Not once, but twice, over a fortnight, our Prime Minister wrote a begging letter asking overseas leaders and bureaucrats in Brussels as to how we could conduct ourselves, how we could lead. I mean, it's an absolute outrage. In uh, exactly. I'll tell you what, you're I could just, you know, <laughs> great job. Um, you can't make this up. Incompetent leadership. Incapable negotiating teams, untrustworthy members of parliament trying to do. They're almost as unpopular as estate agents. <laughs> um, uh, untrustworthy members of parliament doing dodgy, dirty backroom deals, you know, to try and create a sort of coalition of the politicians against the people. And who'd believe it just today? Just today, some chap called Verhofstadt, anyone heard of him? He rocked up to help the Lib Dems. It's quite funny, there's, it's one of, there's about a thousand people here. They were really pleased with their photograph. They had 30 of them. <laughs> um, but not only have we got untrustworthy MPs, but many of them, in being prepared to sign the worst deal ever in history. They're literally prepared to sell our country down the river and we are not going to tolerate it. And then there's my other bet noir, the civil service. Well, they've been shown up to be simply not up to the job. And the truth is, ladies and gentlemen, that it is time for change. We are here to change politics for good. We, we have to take on the vested interests of the establishment. We're going to take on the vested interests of the big multinationals. We're going to take on the incompetence of the civil service who don't believe in what they're negotiating for. Because we all know that this country can do so much better. We deserve so much better. We know what a great, fantastic, proud island nation we are. We don't need to be servants of people in Brussels. So the Brexit Party, we stand for competent, capable, no-nonsense, common-sense politics. That's what's required. It's not a matter of left or right. It's a matter of right or wrong. Capable, brilliant people. And, and the incredible thing, we had over 1,300 applications to be candidates, to be members of the European Parliament for our candidates. And we interviewed well over 150. And the quality of candidates was truly humbling. And you'll hear from the East Midlands candidates 
uh, this evening. It really was incredible. And we have just this week uh, opened on our website uh, the applications for candidates to be members, uh, to be parliamentary candidates for the next general election. Because be under no illusion. We're here to stay, ladies and gentlemen. We're here to stay. We're here to make a difference. We are here to change politics for good. And what we need is we need great people, people who've never previously thought of putting their head above the parapet, getting involved in politics, successful people who've done something, achieved, know how to make things happen, get things done. That's the quality of people we now need in politics so that our country, our great country, is properly governed, properly managed, so that... So that our taxpayers' cash, it's not government money, ladies and gentlemen, it's our money, it's our cash, Absolutely. and that it is spent properly, it is spent wisely, it is spent smartly, that we cut out the rip-offs, the waste, the incompetence. And that's why we need great people, both as members of the European Parliament, hopefully not for long, but who knows, and, and as parliamentary candidates. Because we need to send a very clear message back to Westminster. And that's why it's vital that everyone here tonight votes. You've got to tell your family, your friends, your friends of friends, anybody you come across. Voting in these European elections is more important than ever before. We need to send that message back to Westminster. We meant it the first time. Leave means... Leave! I'm not sure I heard you. Leave means... Leave! Thank you very much. We've got to keep you warming up. A few people nodding off. Um, so we need to send that clear message. We know what an incredible nation we are. We know that with leadership, with confidence, with belief, this country is poised to go from strength to strength. Never before has the opportunity been greater. Never before has the appetite been stronger to change politics for good. So, now the truth is, they call me chairman, but actually I'm just the warm-up act. Um, uh, because uh, it's time to welcome our first speaker, who is a, is a real star. She's been living in uh, the East Midlands in Nottinghamshire for the last seven years. She's worked in manufacturing industries all over the world, so she understands what a great nation we are. She understands how we can trade all over the world. It's fantastic that she was prepared to put her head above the parapet, to take the grief, the angst, the garbage, the trolling that comes with it. So before, please welcome to the stage, Tracy Knowles. To the stage, Tracy Knowles. Everybody. That's, a, that's an awfully long walk by the way, that's worse than the wedding aisle. Um, I just want to tell you a very short story about why I'm here tonight. It actually all started in 2004. I was working in Pennsylvania in the US for a big corporation and for my vacation, I need to probably get a life, but I chose to do an intensive French language course um, outside Lyon. So I flew over the Atlantic into Lyon and I was on this course where you meant to just speak French all week, total immersion course. Anyway, on the last day, there was a little group of five or six of us in the class. There was a Czech lady that was actually in our session. And she stood up to make a presentation all in French. And I'm listening to this presentation and thinking, am I understanding it? Maybe I've got all my passé composé wrong on me and parfait or whatever. But my husband was in there. 
and I'm doing this in English. Are you hearing what I'm hearing? And essentially, she was saying that she was coming from the Czech Republic and she was going to work in Brussels. She was going to be an MEP and how there were another 11 countries that would soon be joining. Now, maybe this was terribly obvious to all of you in 2004, but working in the US, where the news is very parochial, this was a total revelation to me. I remember saying at that point, Europe will never be the same again. So what we saw as a common market and what we saw many of us you know, through the 80s and 90s um, would no longer exist. And if you think since then, we've had Romania, Bulgaria, there's another five countries which could be joining the EU in the next year or two. So Europe isn't what it was. Um, and if you do not believe in ever greater union, there'll never be a better time than now for us to change things. Things can only get more complicated, larger and worse. So now is our time to fight for Brexit. So thank you and I'm one of your candidates for the East Midlands. I've met quite a few of you actually um, on the campaign trail so hope to see many more of you over the next 10-11 um, days. Thank you. It's really, it's really interesting hearing the different reasons why so many different people suddenly the penny dropped about what a con the European Union is. And it was really interesting to hear from Tracy that personal experience. We've all got them. Um, and you know, it, it's fascinating. And thank you, Tracy, for being so courageous to stand up and be counted. So to our next speaker. And so to our next speaker, ladies and gentlemen, who will be known to some of you. Um, many people actually don't know their existing MEP, sometimes for good reason. Um, but, um, but our next speaker uh, has been a fantastic MEP for the last two years, working alongside Nigel. But he's uh, been born and bred in Nottinghamshire, spent most of his life here, and he's worked in the advertising and marketing industry, in particular working with small and medium-sized businesses, which are, of course, the bedrock of the UK economy. Let's remember, it's not actually about the big multinationals. It's about the 90, 95% of British businesses that are small and medium-sized, many, many of them family-owned. <laughs> and it's these small businesses that deserve our help. They're the ones that will turn into the bigger businesses of the future. They're the disruptors, the innovators that we should welcome, the job creators. That's the opportunity. So it's fantastic. Please welcome to the stage the MEP at the moment, Jonathan Bullock. Please welcome to the stage, Jonathan Bullock. Good evening, Lincolnshire. What a fantastic day we've had already. The reception we received in Lincoln earlier today with Nigel Farage was remarkable. Market traders wanted to greet him, shoppers wanted to meet him, and even the younger generation wanted selfies with him. As your candidates, we are campaigning in 16 town and cities in the East Midlands in 19 days. And the reception is the same everywhere. In Chesterfield yesterday, I had, a, had to organise a queue for those wanting selfies with our excellent number one candidate you'll be hearing later from, Anunciata. Why they didn't want to... <laughs> Why they didn't want to selfie with me, I don't know, or, or perhaps I do. 
But just think of it, a traditional Labour town like Chesterfield, forming queues for the Brexit party. Perhaps a former MP for the area, Tony Benn, had installed in the locals his understanding of democracy and rejection of the EU. Yeah. By the way, this was all filmed by Channel 4 News crew and it'll air next week. Well. Even Channel 4 News will find it hard to hide the support for the Brexit Party. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it has been my privilege to rep represent you in the European Parliament for the last two years and expose the anti-democratic, empire-building, corrupt organisation for what it is. And every time I'm in Parliament, I have this card with me. This card is a membership card for the Lincolnshire Lancaster Association. <laughs> My late uncle Don was in Bomber Command uh, and served near here as a wireless operator throughout the war. He survived, but many of his uh, comrades didn't. So when I had the opportunity in the EU Parliament to speak against the European Defence Fund, I made the most of it. This is a £13 billion project to set up an EU army. You know, the one that Nick Clegg swore in a debate against Nigel five years ago that wouldn't happen. I exposed it as a military force and gave examples from the briefing notes I'd come across which said that it'd have drone technology, satellite communications, early warning systems and maritime surveillance. We've had President Macron calling for this army and Guy Verhofstadt boasting about it. That's why, until we are out of the EU, we need Brexit Party MEPs to expose these projects. And let's be clear, we shouldn't be going there. We should have left the EU on March the 29th. Yeah. After all, this is what the Prime Minister promised us over a hundred times. We have been failed and let down by the Conservative government. So it is imperative we get the largest vote possible for the Brexit party. And we provide maximum pressure to respect the referendum results and leave the EU as soon as possible. Thank you. You know where you stand with Jonathan, hard-working, no-nonsense, and a lifelong Eurosceptic. It's fantastic to have him as part of the team. So, and so to our next speaker, another candidate for the East Midlands. She's known to some of you. Uh, she lives in Lincolnshire. Um, she comes from a family that's also been steeped in the tradition of some other party, probably won't mention the name. Her father was editor of the Times for 14 years. It's when it was a decent newspaper. Um, and uh, she herself actually, um, she was made a member of this other party when she was about five, by her brother. <laughs> and whilst he may still be a member of that party, for a while. Annunciata saw the light and she has come to us, and it's fantastic to have her with us today. I think we've got a video of her before we welcome her to the stage. 
I don't have any desire to damage the Conservative Party. I want to wake them up. We've got to rescue our democracy. We have got to show that the people of this country have a say in how we are run. From Maggie Thatcher through to Theresa May, I know which one I'd rather have representing us now. We must fight back not only in control from the European Union, but fight back in control of our own democracy. The stakes are that high. Please welcome to the stage. Annunziata Rees-Mogg. Thank you, Lincolnshire. Thank you, the East Midlands. Last time I gave a speech of this kind, I said I felt like Ronnie O'Sullivan. He lost. <laughs> this time I feel like Judd Trump. <laughs> this is not a fight we can afford to lose. passion of the people in this hall, of the people I'm meeting every single day on the streets, is absolutely overwhelming. We have to fight this battle because we've been betrayed. Yeah. I live in Lincolnshire, but I'm just a mum. I wanted to stay at home with my baby, but some things are too important to ignore. Letting down our democracy, beginning to destroy it, that's unforgivable. Yes. If I have to put my head above the parapet to be a voice for the millions who voted to leave and the millions who voted remain but believe in democracy, then I have to do it. <laughs> this campaign has been extraordinary and we're only halfway through. Yesterday, I was in Chesterfield. I live in Lincolnshire, but the East Midlands is a huge area and we've got to support all of it. The people were coming up to me and saying, thank you. Thank you for giving us a voice. voted at the last election, 85% of us, for the two main parties. Whether you're Conservative, whether you're Labour, they have let you down. We will not! I am one of millions upon millions of people who believe this country is great. We can be even better if we leave the sclerotic EU and fight our own way and expand into the whole world. The idea that democracy is one unit is ridiculous. We are all different people. We have one uniting force behind us. We believe our voices count, 
we believe our views count, and most importantly, we should know our votes count. Make them listen! When I first moved to Lincolnshire, I thought it was the most extraordinary place. The huge skies. But the East Midlands has got the most wonderful people. They have faith in our country. Let's teach our politicians that they should too. Lots of people who dismiss us as newcomers. Well, we are. We started a month ago. For goodness sake, how much can we do? But we are the only party in this country representing the 17.4 million people who voted Leave and the only party. <laughs> we are the only party who believe in democracy being respected. One person, one vote. Make them remember it. Vote Brexit Party. Thank you. Isn't she great? She's a star. And what she's done takes real real courage and we're enormously indebted to both Annunciata and the other candidates as well, Jonathan and Tracy. And that courage is rather different to the courage of this crop of MPs and I just want to give you a little story about members of parliament. I just want you to think the florist who needed a haircut went to the barbers, had a nice haircut, came to pay and the barber said, no, that's on me. It's my week of community service. Flora says, thank you very much. Following morning, barber comes to work. Outside the barber's shop, it's a wonderful, stunning bunch of flowers. Barber thinks that's very nice. That afternoon, the local bobby comes for his hair cut. Needs a proper trim under the helmet. Excuse me. He, order. He has a nice hair cut, comes to pay. The barber says, no, sorry, that's on me. It's my week of community service. Thank you very much, says the police officer. Following morning, barber comes to work. There's some delicious donuts outside the barber's shop. That afternoon, the local member of parliament comes for a haircut. You know where this is going, don't you? Has a nice haircut. Very smart. Comes to pay. Yeah, does offer to pay. And the, member, and the barber says, the barber says, no, that's on me, don't worry, it's, it's, it's my week of community service. Well, the following morning, the barber's thinking, I wonder what will be outside my, my shop as I come to work. A dozen other members of parliament, ladies and gentlemen. As, It was the late, great and much-missed Margaret Thatcher who said that politicians are like nappies. <laughs> they need changing often for the same reason. <laughs> um, and I touched on the courage of these candidates and our final speaker this evening, ladies and gentlemen, has possibly the greatest courage of all because he's been battling for over 25 years for the Eurosceptic cause. The abuse, the vitriol that he has had, that his family have faced, is utterly scandalous. But he saw through it because he knew that he had right on his side. Without question, he's had probably the most influence of any single person in British politics in the last 70 years. Now there were rumours 
There were completely unfounded rumours. They had gone into retirement. <laughs> that he was spending a little bit of time in the States. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the truth is, as chairman, I've got him in training. <laughs> because this really is the biggest battle yet. And as you'll hear this evening, he's ready for it. Before we welcome Nigel to the stage, let's just see him on the video. We have a parliament that is now completely out of touch with our country. I think politics is broken. Our task and our mission is to change politics for good. The Brexit party has been formed because, very simply, the government and parliament do not wish to deliver Brexit. We are fighting back. The whole of our politics needs changing. The two-party system doesn't work anymore. If they thought we were going to give up, they've got another think coming. This country needs the Brexit party, and the Brexit party needs you. Thank you. Please welcome to the stage. Nigel Farage. You are the most fantastic people. I have been here to your county and campaigned many times over the years. In fact, today I was on a walkabout, as Jonathan said, in Lincoln. Now, I, the last time I was here was in the referendum, a week before the referendum, and I thought, wow, there's no question this county is going to vote leave. But I tell you something. Oh, and you did. And you did. But i tell you something. What I felt today in Lincoln, going round those streets, meeting ordinary people, is that actually you are more determined today to get Brexit than you were three years ago. Because... We want our country back, don't we? We want to make our own laws in our own land. We want to control our own borders. We want to stop giving away billions of pounds every year to the European Union. We want to reach out to our friends in the world, the Commonwealth, America, elsewhere. But we have a problem. <laughs> and this might surprise some of you. The problem is not the European Union. The problem is not in Brussels. Now, whatever you may think of Donald Tusk or Michel Barnier, or Guy Verhofstadt, or Jean-Claude Juncker. <laughs> 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 
whatever you may think. By the way, I quite like Jean-Claude Juncker. He's one of the few people I've met that makes me think I haven't got a drink problem, okay? <laughs> but you see, these people running this new European empire, these people who want their European army, their European Air Force, their European Navy, these people who want all their member states to have the Euro, these people who want to crush the very concept of nation-state democracy, but they don't pretend, do they? At least they say what they are about. Now, we may disagree with that, but at least they're upfront and honest. What about God, guys? My prompter comes to every single meeting I do. The timing's a bit out old son, but never mind. <laughs> Here's the point. The point is that on the 23rd of June, 2016, in what was the greatest democratic exercise in the history of our nation, and despite being told by the government, in particular the then Chancellor George Osborne, it really is musical here tonight, isn't it? <laughs> but do you remember what we were told? There'd be an emergency budget, interest rates would go up, taxes would go up, foreign investment would flee the country, despite all the terrible things we were told, despite the American president, Obama. <laughs> the current president prefers us to Obama, I can tell you. But despite all of those things, despite all the threats, we voted to leave. It was very simple. And the next day, David Cameron, remember him? Yeah. He resigned and everybody told us they would respect the result of the referendum. Indeed, during the campaign, Cameron had sent a leaflet to every house in the country, hadn't he? spent 10 million quid of our money trying to scare us but making clear that if we voted to leave we were leaving the single market and customs union. I personally had the opportunity to march up Downing Street and post that leaflet straight back through his front door. <laughs> but everybody told us they would respect the result. And then a year on, that incredible election winning machine called Theresa May <laughs> God, she's hopeless, isn't she? <laughs> but she is. She is. Now, Anne Whittacombe, Anne Whittacombe, who's joined the Brexit party, and well done, Anne. <laughs> Anne Whittacombe says that Theresa May is the worst British Prime Minister since Anthony Eden. And I don't want a party that only launched four weeks ago today. How about that? Four weeks ago today we launched. And I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to be, have uh, party splits. I wouldn't want to disagree with Anne Whittacombe. In fact, knowing her now under any circumstances. Because <laughs> I think she might just about get her way. But Anne is wrong. <coughs> Theresa May is not the worst Prime Minister we've had since Anthony Eden. She's the worst most duplicitous and dishonest Prime Minister this country has ever had in its history. They talk about, they talk about Mrs May's deal, which has now been rejected three times by the House of Commons. It is not a deal. 
It is a new European treaty. You know, my friend Barnier walks around with it leather bound under his arm, calling it a treaty at every given opportunity. Far from being a deal, it is more like a surrender document that would only be signed by a country that had been defeated in war. What she has done with that document is to reduce this country to humiliate us on the world stage, and it isn't good enough. It isn't good enough. And she's part of the problem, but there are many other problems too. From Clegg through Tony Blair, through John Major, the entire political class, despite telling us in a general election the year later they would respect the will of the people, and despite the fact that 500 MPs voted for Article 50, which was put into British law, and Article 50 said we will leave the European Union at 11 p.m. on March the 29th with or without a deal. And despite all of that, did we leave on March the 29th? Did we leave, as she told us, on the 12th of April? Did we, as she promised us, would it be certain we'd leave by the 30th of June? No. And now we're told we'll leave on the 31st of October. No. Halloween day. <laughs> Ask yourself, trick or treaty? Yeah. Now our problem, our problem is not in Brussels. Our problem is in SW1. Our problem is in Westminster. Our problem is a career political class backed up by big business and big banks who willfully, who willfully have betrayed this nation and it's not good enough. So I, as our chairman, implied earlier, you see, I thought we'd won. No, I did. I campaigned for 25 years to get that referendum and for our country to be free. I dedicated... I dedicated the best part of my adult life to fighting this cause and when those 500 MPs voted for Article 50 I thought we were done. I thought I was done. I'm not a career politician. I'm a businessman that came into this because I believe in our people and I believe in our country. I thought we were done. What I've learnt since that referendum when I meet people, like I did in Lincoln today, is the beating heart of our country wants to be free. We are proud. We are proud of who we are. We are patriotic without disliking anybody. But we as a nation, as we've learnt in the last three years, we as a nation now are lions led by donkeys. That is where we are today. So I said, having spent 25 years fighting for this, I'll be damned if I'm going to be rolled over, pushed aside by this group of career politicians. No, I said, the time has come to stand up 
to fight back and that is why I founded the Brexit party and I'm proud of the people I've attracted who are on this stage fighting with me. Very proud. But our battle is bigger and more fundamental than just winning that vote on May the 23rd, important though that is. You see, even if we win that vote, even if they forced us to have a second referendum, and by the way, wouldn't it be outrageous if they did, with the first one not being implemented, but even if they did, and if the Leave side won by a bigger majority, which it would, I've got no doubt about it, but even if those things happen, the truth is, with this parliament, with this government, with this two-party system in charge, they would still willfully disregard the British people. Yes. Politics in our country is broken. Yes. The two-party system serves nothing but itself. And our job, Anna Soubry, Anna Soubry. No, she's changed her name today by deed poll after question time last night. <laughs> but no, she's changed her name by deed poll. She's not Anna Soubry anymore. She's Anna Sourface from now on. And I'm trying to be serious here for a moment, and it's very difficult with you lot. <laughs> Particularly the, the rabble in the front row. The bar must have opened early, is all I can say. The point is this. The Brexit Party's job is not just to win this election. It's not just to field candidates in the Peterborough by-election, as we will do. Yeah. As we will do. It's not just the campaign to leave the European Union. This country needs fundamental reform and change of its entire political system. That is what is needed. Our message, our message to the political class, if we go out and win this European election on May the 23rd, our message is either you deliver a meaningful Brexit to the people of this country or the Brexit party will at the next general election replace you. Nothing less will do. Nothing less will do. We've got to get different people in politics. We've got to get a parliament that reflects the will of this nation. We've got to fight like crazy to make these things happen. And myself and my colleagues on this platform, we have made this commitment. I want to ask you, are you prepared to join us and make that commitment. Will you go out in the next two weeks? Will you campaign for the Brexit Party? Will you tell your friends to go out and vote for the Brexit Party? And do you believe that together we can win? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. I told you. <laughs> His training's going rather well, actually, I think. <laughs> he really is just warming up. Long may it continue. But the truth is, yes, politics is a serious business, but we can still have a bit of fun. And we've got some questions here, the first of which... It crops up surprisingly frequently, actually, for Nigel. The first question is, 
What is your favourite beer? Well, now, it is true that I've never previously been photographed in public without a pint in my right hand. <laughs> this is true, but I did say to my friends and family at Christmas that I knew I'd not yet fought my biggest political battle. And to that end, I'm in training, I'm off the beer, because I want to beat the establishment, and that's what matters. So, and we'll give Nigel a breather. Annunciata, we've got a question from Peter from Lincoln. Um, what can we do as the Brexit party to reach out to the millennials, to the young people, to make sure that they vote for the Brexit party? We're here! Yeah. <laughs> As I have just entered my uh, fourth decade, I don't think I'm the person to be answering this, but I know that all the young people I know fundamentally believe in democracy. They believe in one person, one vote, that what we say matters. We have to spread that word, that it doesn't matter if you're 18 or 88, you are the same you are important to our entire country. Every single person is. I also happen to know that Lincoln, Lincoln University, is the first in the country to have a Leavers Association. Well done, Lincoln! Personally, I'm proud of those students because they have fought hard and long against the establishment's preconception that they don't care. They do, they've shown it. Well done. The next question is from Amanda from Billingborough. Um, tonight's all very well, we're preaching to the converted. But how do we break through, in particular, to the voters who still might want to vote for that party, the Conservative Party, or perhaps more importantly, voters from the Labour Party? Well, I mean, the form is, if you believe in Brexit, the Conservative Party has let you down like a cheap pair of braces. It's pretty simple. <laughs> and as far as Labour's concerned, and of course Lincoln is a Labour-controlled council, what Jeremy Corbyn has done is to play this game of constructive ambiguity, sitting on the fence, appealing to Remainers in London, to Leavers in the north of England. But look at the candidates that are standing for Labour in the European elections. Nearly every one of them wants a second referendum. <coughs> Nearly every one of them wants to remain. And perhaps their most high profile candidate is Lord Adonis. <laughs> Lord Adonis, a Blairite creation, but hey. And Lord Adonis said a few months ago, if you're a Brexiteer, don't vote Labour. And I recommend we take that message out and spread it to our friends and family. Yeah. <laughs> Both of these parties... Both of these parties have willfully broken their manifesto commitments. So please, this opportunity we've got on the 23rd of May is to try to teach both of them a lesson they won't forget. Although, the truth is, they won't learn the lesson. The truth is, we have to be the insurgent force that replaces them in Westminster. Tell your friends that message. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end uh, this evening. But oh, 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 no. but we do need what we do need is we need we need to send a huge message, a huge message oh, we get, guys. to those people down in Westminster. 
those members of Parliament who are trying to betray us. So let's have you all on your feet with your placards. Good man. So, ladies and gentlemen, what do we want? Brexit! When do we want it? Now! What do we want?